spirit. That's what it is. We're about to approach what's called the plane of fire. If you go through various civilizations, they call it the grand alignment. And we're also about to see the passage of what's called the destroyer. In the Bible, it was called the death angel. In fact, the feast that is actually enshrined into Israel is called the Passover, Pesha. And in the Passover, if you know anybody that's Jewish or Messianic, like I'm a Messianic believer, they set a seat for Elijah. It's always empty, but they're waiting because when Elijah shows up, everything's going to be restored. So you have to understand the technical singularity. Read Ray Kurzweil's book. Realize that the technology is about to swallow us up. And they want it to. Okay? They're here as global abortionists. And the next age is prepared for birth. We're literally being wheeled down to the delivery room to planet Earth. And there's this galactic and cosmic abortionist. You can call them tall grays. I took care of John Fiala, who was good friends with Phil Schneider. And one of the stories he told me, and I heard this from numerous sources, these things are not imaginary. They're real. It says, woe to you, earth, and you see, for the devil and his minions have come down to you. Well, let me tell you, if you think ETs are not real, you're like Niles Barkley. You're the one that's crazy. <laughs> okay? And if you don't understand this, let me tell you, when you see 12-foot reptilians bouncing down the street of the Washington Mall, you're going to believe it. Because when first contact happens and you've got easy believism of whatever religion you've got, it's gone. You're going to believe the gospel. Yes, uh, Quetzal. Yes, I was made in your image. I'm made in the image of this reptilian monstrosity. Okay? The ET gospel is coming. A strong delusion. And don't be deluded. You're created by the creator of the universe. You're not created in the image of a demonic entity, a super scientist, with no spiritual connection to the creator. You're not. And why is that important to understand 9-11? It's a spiritual root. Just why all these medical technologies that could have wiped out all the diseases over the last hundred years, why aren't they present? Why do doctors that come up with wonderful cures get persecuted of cancer and heart disease and whatever? They get persecuted because the big pharma, it says in Revelation 9, they would not repent of their pharmakia, their pharmacies. They're sorceries. Do you know how the German Nazis got their G proteins in their, on their fluoridation? They channeled demonic and transdimensional entities and they told them how to do it, just like the saucers that went through the gate and they actually captured these things. Okay? That's how they had it. They went back to them and said, oh boy. The Gellenschaft and Thule Society confirmed to them that they used these spiritual craft, these spiritual crafts of doing these, like warlocks and wizards, to actually get these things like the Philosopher's Stone and all the other things. People don't understand the real world we're dealing with. They live in a Pollyanna world that doesn't exist. So you have to know who we are and you have to know the Creator or you will not understand what's going on. Now the Luciferic global power is built on deception, death and destruction. Just like Sen Tzu, war is deception. Death. They only gain power when they create chaos, and then they create the order of the chaos, problem, reaction, solution. But it goes much deeper than that. They're here to slay your soul, your mind. That's why all these games, in a sense, ultimately are an attack on your mind. Your soul is your mind. People think that you have an eternal soul. No. As it says in the Bible, you have the physical death of the body, the flesh, and the second death is the annihilation of of your mind. Now I, 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 I try to explain this to people because I'm a medical intuitive that there is no such thing as reincarnation. Let's let, lay that to rest. Okay? Now you have to understand why I say that. Okay? Because I have knowledge that I can't in this short period of time explain to you. You're not the little downloadable card that records the memory. You are the memory. You are the book that literally walks with the Creator and you co-create whether you listen to the voice of the Creator who you are and where you'll be tomorrow and whether you'll serve the Creator and do the right thing or whether you will not. And at the end of your life, the book is written. It goes on the shelf because it's a good book that the Creator liked or it's a book that the book never responded back to the Creator. It was never written. It went off and did whatever it want, horrific things. That book is taken out in the trash 
and put in the incinerator. It suffers the second death. It is annihilated. There's no such thing as an eternal hell. Unless you call hell eternal separation from the Creator, you don't exist anymore. And this exists for all sentient beings across the entire cosmos, whether you're human or non. And what we're basing is a galactic and a cosmic war of proportions that you can't imagine. So when you see these crafts that are flying in space and these giant ETs, yes, there are some that are good, but there's a protocol for interaction that, they have, that these other ones obviously violate. Deep underground bases, one of my friends who's the senior um, command engineer at, in central Germany for uh, the Aurora Space Fleet, he told me after a few years, they said, well, we're going to put you through 10 months of psychological tests, and then we're going to bring you to the deepest parts of the base. So after he did his test, he said, well, where are we going? He said, well, we're going to go down to the bottom level. And when he got there, he saw all these beings. Tall grays, short grays, all kinds of other creatures, just like right out of Men in Black. And let me tell you, if you think these things are good, I got a bridge on the moon for you. Okay? And they have an operation called the Project Omega, thought up by the Nazis with the Thule Gellenschaft, populated by not only human but these non-human entities, and their chief underground control center for controlling all the intelligence on Earth is underground in Colorado. The hotbed of the satanic control on this planet is in Colorado. Okay? And if you think of the U.S. president as, well, just a buffoon, yeah, he's a sock puppet, all right, but you can't imagine the technology that America has. America is about to absorb Canada and Mexico, fail forward. It is the, the president of the United States, or the new, now resurrected, died and yet was reborn, the United American States will be the leader that will be the false prophet of what's coming and is the one that can force the mark because the mark of the beast is going to come from America. Because we won't stand against it. The technologies here that we have in America are so powerful, people can't even imagine that we're transferred to us from these worlds. Space-based platforms circulating all around our planet. Nuclear weapons in space, biological weapons in space, gamma neutron weapons, uh, chemical lasers, harp systems that can set up, burst up earthquakes and change the weather. They are the God of this world. It says in the Bible that they will call down fire from heaven, save those they take the mark, small and rich and poor, and they're ready to do it. All they need to do is have the next catalyzing event, and we're there. <clears throat> and you have to understand, the Bible is not... I hear people say the Bible, you know, is 6,000 years old. That's ridiculous. The world was formless and void because civilization fell. The word Adam means a man who was called by God. It means a red man. It means the first man who knew God. But when he went out and married, he married other men that were in the land of Nod. You have to understand, our civilization has fallen before from global cataclysms, wars, and there's good chemical evidence, not my conjecture, that there was a nuclear war around 11,500 years ago between the areas of Saudi Arabia and North India. That's a fact. It's not even open for dispute. We got the krypton nuclei and the others that prove that. So you have to understand the world was formless and void because we didn't listen before. And our world was destroyed. And there was only a tiny remnant. Well, there's a small scroll. And I'm going to give you the third chapter if we have time today. The first two chapters, the first chapter I released, which is 1998, which is a prophecy against America out of 12 chapters. The second was released three years ago at Pastor Butch Paz's conference, and, and uh, the mark is a medical procedure. And you have to understand, if the doctors don't cooperate, the Dr. Mangala, you have no New World Order. So if there's any doctors or physicians or nurses here, you've got to get a backbone transplant if you're not speaking up now. Because there's no New World Order unless you have health professionals willing to vaccinate children, mind control with medications, or not, not whistleblow about depleted uranium and all the other horrors in society like toilet to tap water toxins that are destroying our biology or electromagnetic pollution because they don't want you to know they're trying to destroy your biology in preparation for pandemics and massive mega death of Earth. Okay, that's coming. <clears throat> and we have to forgive, and by forgiveness, it's like the biblical forgiveness, it means we have to want to restore relationship with countries like Iran and Russia and all these countries and stop the dialectic pretending to be at war when we're not, like the, the phony missiles. 
I found out in my research that in 1993, through the Iridium Satellite Project, we transferred technology to the Russians and Chinese to target American cities with long-range nuclear weapons, and through Los Alamos, gave the miniaturization of nukes technology. Let me tell you, do not discount the Russian physicists and scientists. They have some really bad stuff. If we really got into a shooting war with these guys, they would target. Now, I'm going to tell you, in 1995, I, on March uh, 16, 1995, I actually sat down with Colonel Lynn Wills, Chief Missile Command Officer of Strategic Defense in my dining room. We're cutting up a roast in Colorado Springs. And he told me the previous week, because he's a believer, they went to DEVCON 4 because the Chinese sent a modified M9 missile aimed directly at St. Louis. It didn't carry a payload, but they didn't know, notify NORAD, so we were going to launch on command sequence. You have no idea how close we've come to launching a nuclear war in the last three or four decades. We were within 90 seconds to annihilation because we would have launched against every city and town in China and Russia, and they would have launched on us. And anybody who thinks that Russia doesn't have nukes, I got another bridge for you on the moon. I know, okay? <clears throat> you have to be still and you have to empty yourself and become humble. And, I, and you have to understand that we're getting, a, the questions being asked ultimately are not a technical question whether I should be using natural medicines or this or that or whether I should not allow fluoridation in my water. The ultimate questions are always and ultimately spiritual. And the reason why we don't have zero point energy, why we don't have uh, engines that put a plasma into our fuel so we have 150 gallon, uh, mile per gallon cars it's not a technical question. If you invent these things like Stanley Meyer, you end up eating food that kills you the next day. Or if you come up with a good idea to cure cancer or AIDS or whatever, good luck. Because if you don't come public and come uh, quickly public right away, if you're uh, like that, you're going to die real fast. They don't want you to. Now, John DiNardo had a very interesting uh, analysis. He's one of the gentlemen. He's actually a former. Um, researcher for Bell Labs, engineer, physicist. And he's also a believer, and he wrote down this analysis, if you go back to the Hebrew scriptures, and it says here about 2012. Now, I'm not going to give a prophecy about 2012, but it is a grand alignment, and we're facing major earthquakes and earth changes and weather changes that are very significant. And it says, and I will tread down the people in mine anger and make them drunk in my fury, and I will bring from afar my glittering blood-red object to its goal, which is planet Earth. If you can go inside the pyramids in Egypt, you'll see the symbols there. If you look back at other ancient documents, you'll see this blazing kind of sphere with these wings on it. And what you'll see, that's called the destroyer. In the Bible, it's called the death angel. And it's coming back. And it's going to come back probably just after 2012, not right there. It's going to be in a matter of time before it affects us. But the grand alignment will have effects because we're already having a collapse. As, it, as we speak, the magnetic, the magnetosphere of the North Atlantic and the South Atlantic is already gone. Did you know that? The news is not telling you that, but that's a fact. We've had engineers talking about that. We have a massive increase in volcanic activity under the oceans. That's why these areas are melting like crazy. It's not because of increased sunlight, because the sun has been the quietest it has been in 360 years with no solar spots since January 4th, solar cycle 24. It's because of volcanism on Mauna Lea and Hawaii and around the world is increasing like crazy. That's why these volcanoes in Ecuador are taking off, because we're ready to have a major shift in the magma, the literally giant rivers that are hundreds of times bigger than the, than the flow in the, in the Amazon, each of these rivers, underneath the, the, the magma shield, underneath the, the crust of the Earth, thousands of miles deep. Now, our Earth is a trinary star system, and Jupiter actually gives off more radiation than it receives. It gives off infrared and radio waves, and so it's actually a star. And they've known this. The scientists have been monitoring this, and if you listen to my show, the issue of 2012 and after that is not peripheral. It's not, just like the ET thing. And you wonder why the... Globalists are not even using any discernment or discretion. They're running naked to the finish line. And the reason why they're running naked to the finish line is because they're building underground bases with our money and drug money. And why, people say, well, why is $2.6 trillion disappear? Why is $500 billion at least a year estimated just in the legal drug sales in America? Why the war on drugs? Why are doctors going to prison 
from treating people with terminal cancer and other things with narcotics in 